Well, a science startup company in the United States has claimed that they have successfully de-extincted dire wolves. This claim is now being questioned by some scientists who believe that these are not the species that went extinct more than 10,000 years ago. Let's get more on the science behind all of this. And I'm joined by Philip Seddon, Professor of Zoology at the University of Otago. Uh, good to have you with us, Professor Seddon. Now, firstly, are these dire wolves that, you know, those that roamed the Americas 13,000 years ago? The short answer is no. Um, what they are are genetically modified grey wolves. Yes, so the company behind it, Colossal Biosciences, says you know, it, it used ancient DNA uh, in the genetic modification process. Is this actually possible to extract ancient DNA from fossilised remains? Yes, it is. So what they have done is, is extract ancient DNA. They've reassembled the entire genetic structure, the genome of a dire wolf. And then they've compared that with the genomes of a grey wolf, which is a near relative. And they've, what they've done is engineer into grey wolves some characteristics of dire wolves. So this is making their, their coat pale, their head bigger, and their body just of a greater man. And in your opinion, uh, do you think this, perhaps this is a little bit deceiving for, for them to say that they have you know, brought back an extinct animal back to nature? And because it is, is it a different animal altogether, as you mentioned, uh, the grey wolf? Yeah, the devil's in the details. So this is a GMO grey wolf with dire wolf features. If you dig into what colossal biotype it says, they, what they want to do is come up with a functional equivalent. I think using the term de-extinction is kind of misleading because you can't bring back extinct species of any kind at this stage. So what you do is you, you try and recreate some of the features. Yes, Philip, what do you also make of this uh, definition by Colossal Biosciences which says that this particular feat does constitute de-extinction simply because it is recreating animals with the very same characteristics? Well, it doesn't have all the characteristics. There are very small changes that they've introduced. When you think about dire wolves and grey wolves, they probably share 90 plus percent of their genetic material. But you think about humans, we, we see nearly 99 percent of chimpanzees, and look how different we are. So there's a big difference between a GMO grey wolf and a dire wolf. So we're not going to see dire wolves back again, we're going to see something else. Yes, and what do we know about Colossal Biosciences, this company? I mean, has it attempted something similar in the past, or does it have, you know, or what can you say about its future projects, perhaps? Well, Colossal Biosciences is the, the biggest, you could argue, the only serious player in this kind of space. They're really pushing the genetic technology for conservation. The, the poster child, if you like, is the woolly mammoth. And even there, what they're proposing to do is re engineer Asian elephants to be fatter in area so that they can live in cold climates. While I think de extinction is a terrible term and it can be misleading, it's probably great for fundraising, but I'm an enthusiast about the technology that the biosciences are pushing. So I think this technology that they've developed, or this dire wolf, grey wolf hybrid, it's something we could see about re used to re-engineer lots of diversity into species that are at the brink of extinction. Mm. And then finally, I think a lot of questions, a lot of people are asking on the basis of what uh, biosciences has done, is can and should extinct animals like the woolly mammoth, the dodo, or closer to home, the Tasmanian tiger, ever be brought back to nature? At the moment, the extinction is forever. So we're not going to see those things back. We're going to see some version, some near relatives with some characteristics. You could argue that a, a gap in nature and you want to replace that kind of functional thing that those things did in that environment, there could be a case of doing that. Okay, Professor Philip Seddon, thank you very much for explaining the science behind all of this. Thank you so much.